All right, welcome back. This episode, as promised, we're going to fix a few bugs and we'll make some improvements to our little movement system, show you how to make a map, and just make everything look a little bit nicer. Just a reminder, this is the second episode of this series, and here is what we're making. If you're new, I suggest you watch the first video to get a pretty good understanding of what exactly is going on. Otherwise, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I was alluding to is if you built and run this, everything looks fine. That is until you have two players. As you can see, I'll go to this edge right here. Now, as you can see, the players do actually sync over the network, as you can see here. But there's some funky behavior going on. The reason for this is because although these players are synced over the network, as you can see here, they both have a camera. So when you press W, you're actually not only just moving your character, but the other player's character as well. And when you look, you're not only looking at through your camera, but through the other player's camera as well, which is a pretty big issue. So ideally, we'd only want to enable the movement and the camera if this player is the local player that you're playing on. So let's do that. In our player prefab, let's create a new component called player setup. We can delete this and let's create a public reference to our movement. And let's create a public reference to our camera. Now we'll create a new method called public void is local player and we'll set our movements to be enabled and we'll enable our camera now it's very important that you disable both these things by default and in our room manager script, let's actually call this method for our local player. So we'll do player dot get component player setup dot is local player. So what this thing does is it syncs the creation of the game object over the network, but this will only be called on our local player. And in our player, let's reference our movement and our main camera. Now, if you build this, so we have two players. Oh, uh, three actually. So now we have two players and let's say I move this one to this edge right here. It's now synced up perfectly. Now let's say we move up right over here. As you can see everything is working as intended. Perfect. Sweet. Now let's improve this movement script over here. So the first thing we're gonna add is some sprinting. So let's jump in, add a public float sprint speed and let's set it to 14. And then down here, add a private boolean 
called sprinting. Now we'll set sprinting to be equal to input dot get button sprint. And then in here, what we want to do is if we're sprinting, we want to use this sprint speed. And if we're not sprinting, we want to use this walk speed. Now we could do this using an if statement, but there's actually some shorthand that we can use that's much simpler. So in here, type sprinting question mark. And if this is true, we want to use our sprint speed and then add a colon. And then if this is false, we'll use this walk speed. And now you may get this error that says input button sprint is not set up. So let's go to edit, project settings, go to input manager, axes. And let's duplicate this jump axis. So right click on it, click duplicate array element. Let's name this sprint and we'll set the positive button to left shift. Awesome. So now if you hit play, you can now sprint as you can see. Let's add some jumping. We need a few more variables here. The first one, let's add some space. Let's make a public float, jump height, and we'll set this equal to 30. Here, where we have our Boolean for sprinting, let's add a private Boolean for jumping, and a private Boolean for grounded. So in this update method, let's set jumping to be equal to input the get button jump. And if we're jumping, we want to obviously jump over here. But we only want to do that when we're grounded or touching the ground. So if grounded, let's actually move all of this in here because we only want to move when we're touching the ground as well. So if grounded and if we're jumping, let's make this else. So if we're not jumping, we'll do the movement. We'll do our rigid body dot velocity equals We'll set our rigid body dot velocity to a new vector three. For the x, we'll do rb dot velocity dot x. For the y, we'll do our jump height, and for the z, we'll do rb dot velocity dot z. So now that's our jump code, but how do we actually tell that we're grounded? So in here, we actually have to add a new check called on trigger stay. So add a new private void called on trigger stay with a collider named other. And we'll set grounded to be equal to true. And at the end of this fix update, let's set grounded to be equal to false. So let's test this out. There's actually one more thing that we need, and that's a trigger collider on this player right here. So on this main object, create a new sphere, create a new sphere collider, and I'll adjust this to be just a little bit wider and below this capsule. Now what this sphere does is if there are objects in this sphere, 
then the movement strips will count it as being grounded. So it's good to have it a little bit wider just to fix some jankiness. In here, tick is trigger. And we're ready to test. Hit play. And now we can now jump around and move. Now you might notice that there's, oops. <laughs> Now you might notice that we have absolutely no control over our player while he's in the air. So let's add some air control to this beam to just make the movement feel more smooth. So let's add some space and I'll make a new public float called air control. And we'll set this to be equal to 0.5 by default. So we'll take half of this walk speed or the sprint speed while we're not grounded or in the air. So if we're not grounded, let's copy this part of the code. So let's multiply both our sprint speed and walk speed by air control. Okay. Let's test. And now we have some very nice movement. So just as one final thing, let's make a very simple map for our player to interact with. So in this banana dev pack, go to your prefabs and just drag in some props. Okay, now we should be good. Now we can also walk through these obstacles, which is not very ideal. So let's add colliders to them. Select all these props and let's add a mesh collider. Let's make it convex, which just optimizes it. And now if we run this, So we have two of our players. <laughs> we have uh, two of our players and, you know, this, this jump's a bit big, but I can change that later. Yeah, let's fix this jump. Um, we'll set this to something more reasonable, like uh, five, for example. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you for sticking around. In the next video, we'll be adding some weapons and a basic health system and respawning. See you then.